Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book you see in front of you, Setting Up a Home Car Workshop. What I want to do in today's video is cover a high current battery charger that you can build yourself. How high in current? 30 amps, 40 amps. It can do all those sorts of currents without even raising much of a sweat. But a word of warning first. This is not a project for people who are not familiar with mains power, mains voltages. Uh, you really do need to know what a bridge rectifier is. You really do need to have some sort of familiarity with say a silicon controlled rectifier, a module, a pre-built module. Uh, these are things that if you're not familiar with, you should not embark on this project. But having said all that, let's take a look at it. So what we've got here is a picture of the charger in operation. Now on the right is the charger. It's actually a repurposed welder. It's a welder I got for nothing at the local rubbish tip. Uh, it's had some modifications made to it, which we're gonna cover in a minute, and it's had a bit of paint, but the starting point is just an old discarded or very cheap welder. And you can see it's connected to a large car battery, and you can also see that I'm measuring current with a current clamp. That's the device that the cable passes through and a multimeter. And if you can see the numbers on the multimeter, you'll see that I'm currently charging at over 40 amps. This is a high current battery charger indeed. So let's take a look and see what components are actually used. Well, the main addition is this silicon controlled rectifier module. It's a mains voltage module. You turn the knob on the far end and it changes the voltage that is coming out of it. And this is a 10 kilowatt one, so you need a high powered one. They're very cheap, eBay or Banggood supplies like that. So the mains voltage comes into this module and then this module feeds the transformer, the AC transformer, of course it's AC, uh, that's in the welder. And by turning this knob, we can change therefore the voltage going into the transformer and therefore the voltage coming out of it. And you've got adjustment typically of something like 0 to 50 volts or 0 to 70 volts uh, simply by turning the knob. Now, make sure you earth this um, module uh, to, to the mains earth. That's one of the safety things that I talked about earlier. So let's take a look inside the repurposed welder. Well, on the left at the top, where the blue arrow is, that's the silica controlled rectifier module. And you can see I've moved its knob, its adjustment knob, I've moved to the front of the uh, welder, which has now become a battery charger. The yellow arrow points to the original transformer, big hefty transformers in these welders, which of course is why they're so heavy and why originally they were fairly expensive. Um, and then we've got the bridge rectifier. We need to turn the AC output of the transformer into DC to charge the battery. And we need a pretty hefty bridge rectifier, uh, 100 amp, for example, bridge rectifiers are available quite cheaply, again, on eBay or Banggood. And you want one that's designed to be screwed to a heat sink. There'll be a voltage drop across the diodes in the rectifier. And because we're talking about high currents, uh, that'll result in some power that needs to be dissipated. So you need a hefty heat sink. Uh, it's the bridge rectifier that gets the hottest in this particular design. You can see where the red arrow is that it's been attached to a nice big heat sink. To get rid of heat, we have the original fan on the left in this welder, but I've also added another fan that's gone on top. And that works through a grill that I've made in the top panel. Both of those fans are 240 volt or mains voltage, depending on, on what country you live. It might not be 240 volts. Um, they're both mains voltage fans, so they can be run directly from the supply. No, no need to, to use another transformer or anything of that sort. Now, another point is inside the welder, connecting the rectifier to the output terminals and connecting the transformer to the rectifier, you need obviously really heavy ga gauge uh, wire, heavy duty wire, uh, because it has to be rated at the maximum current that the welder is capable of producing. Now, how do you use this, um, or, or the charger is producing? How do you use this? Well, you connect it to your, your battery and then you set the output voltage, which in turn, of course, sets how much current is flowing. Now, this is not a battery charger to set and forget and walk away from. Absolutely not. But for example, if you've got a battery that's well down and you urgently need it, uh, you could charge it at 30 amps or 40 amps for, say, 10 or 15 minutes. You check on the temperature of the battery. You would obviously make sure that the battery charger itself wasn't getting too hot. It shouldn't. Um, and then by that stage, the battery voltage will have risen sufficiently that you can use it. 
Or of course, you can charge at a much lower current. You could set the battery charger output to 10 amps or 15 amps and, and it will take commensurately longer to charge the battery. Now, 10 or 15 amps might not sound very much, but in the real world, most battery chargers can't produce anything like that. They might say they can, but when you measure it, oh, there's my plant watering system, a different video, my plant watering system operating in the background, just a, a minor distraction. Uh, as I was saying, when you uh, uh, measure the output of a, uh, a commercial battery charger, even those that are rated at 10 or 15 amps, often they're not producing anything like that. So this is very cheap, very high current. Uh, all you need to do is get a discarded welder as your starting point. But I put one of these symbols on it because I didn't want people playing with it. This is not a battery charger to give to someone else and say, hey, Fred, charge that battery. Um, uh, the battery may well explode if you start charging at 40 or 50 amps for an hour. It's, it's not designed for that use. So plenty of warnings, which are really important, plenty of warnings in terms of, of, of actually wiring the device up and, and handling those mains voltages and currents, earthing the, the, the body, earthing the SCR and so on. And then when you are using it, also plenty of warnings. But having said all that, I've got this in my workshop. When I've got a dead flat battery that I urgently need to use, especially if it's a larger lead acid battery, a tractor or a truck battery. Oh, and of course, um, you can charge 24 volt batteries with it as well. You just crank up the voltage a bit more. Uh, so it's a very versatile battery charger, which obviously costs nearly nothing. The book's called Setting Up a Home Car Workshop. Do I cover this battery charger in it? No, I don't. I, I actually developed this charger since I wrote the book. Um, but I think you'll find plenty of interest in that book if you have your own home car workshop. Thank you.